Hello guys, Josh here, welcome back to the channel, and no, this video is not sponsored by Alienware. I actually bought all of this stuff with my own money, let me explain. So I've been wanting to change out the peripherals in the main setup for ages now, I've actually been using the current stuff for like 2-3 to three years, and it's time for a change. And so, I decided to pick up some Alienware stuff. Now I know there's going to be some people in the comments that are like, why did you go for Alienware, it's literally the worst, but I don't care what anybody says guys, I think Alienware makes cool stuff. I bought one of their monitors last year, the ultra wide in the middle of the setup and literally the best monitor I've ever bought. It had like zero IPS glow. I've had no problems with it. I love it. Now I've actually got a little theory guys regarding aesthetics versus performance in correlation with what games people play, which kind of seems obvious, but I'll explain. So esports professionals or people who play like tons of esports titles, I don't often see them in general, like I say, this is a bit of a sweeping statement, but I don't see them with setups like this. They don't really seem to be that bothered about things like cable management, and at the end of the day, they want the best of the best in terms of performance. If that means something doesn't look as good, they're not that bothered, because they're trying to be competitive, and the stuff they use is literally like tools to get a job done. Now, me personally, guys, I'm not really a massive esports title player. I will play them from time to time, but I kind of prefer open world games and kind of story-driven stuff. And for me, I kind of sometimes value aesthetics over performance. Like, if it doesn't look good, I don't want it. Now, I reckon that Alienware have some of the best aesthetics going. Like, I don't think you can really argue that it doesn't look cool. Again, though, not to say it doesn't perform well. I've always had good experiences with the Alienware products that I've used. And I love the aesthetics. At the end of the day, as you can see by my room, I'm trying to get it to look as kind of cool and kind of futuristic as possible. And this stuff just kind of nails the aesthetic for me. So I'm really looking forward to installing it in the setup today. We're going to go unbox it now, get rid of all the old stuff, and then get this installed. Let's go. All right, guys. So just before we unbox the new stuff, oh, do you like my new light, by the way? Looks pretty cool. It's from Philips Hue. Anyway, the stuff I've been using for the past few years, we've got a keyboard from Drevo here, or Dravo. It is the Blade Master Pro, and it's got red switches, which are kind of my favorite. And I've always liked how it's got this LED strip kind of running all the way along it, which is quite unusual. Uh, for the mouse, I've been using the Logitech G900, which it's been a great mouse. I think it's been replaced now by the, is it the G903? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is, but never had any issues with it. I've had it literally three years, although it's starting to show some signs of cosmetic aging, which you can't really see because it's in the dark. And then the headset I've been using is the Razer Nari Wireless, although I did recently pick up the SteelSeries Arctis 1, and I've actually been using them more. So you know, I've got way too many headsets now. I probably don't even need the Alienware one, but I got a really good deal on it and it does look pretty cool. Although the one I've got is actually the previous generation one because the new one wasn't wireless and you know me guys, it has to be wireless. As regards the keyboard and mouse though, they're actually white. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this looks because I've never liked how with the black mouse pad, the mouse just kind of blends into it. Like you can't even see it. So the new stuff is white and I don't know, I just reckon it'll look really kind of cool. Uh, with the rest of the setup so let's go unbox it right so i'm going to try not to take too long on each unboxing because we've got three products to unbox and i am going to be doing a full review at some point anyway so let's go and of course we've got the super necessary karambit knife to help us so here's what it looks like guys and i can assure you that it looks just as good in person if not better than it does on the pictures um obviously we've not plugged it in yet so we've not seen what the little glowing alien and kind of leds on the side look like but yeah this looks really really nice in the bottom here, you can see we've got the USB receiver, so that's kind of just stored in there like that. It just pops in, which is uh, pretty cool. So yeah, just stick that in your computer, and then you'll be able to play wirelessly. Feels pretty good in the hand. I normally use this grip. Uh, scroll wheel feels nice and tactile. We've got our DPI shift button here. Uh, back and forwards buttons, which I know some people like to have more buttons in this. Personally, I've never really used them, so it's fine for me. Uh, but yeah, very, very nice looking. I'm looking forward to seeing how it looks like when it's on. Now, you can actually use it wired or wireless. It's kind of up to you. And they say that it can last up to 350 hours on one charge, which is obviously going to be without the lights on. Otherwise, that would be incredible. We've got a 16,000 DPI sensor in here, which, you know, I mean, I don't even know what I play at. Maybe like seven, 8,000. 
so I can't imagine many people complaining about the sensitivity. It's fine. So we'll put the mouse to one side and we'll see what else is in the box. I'm guessing it's just going to be a couple of cables. Let's see what's in this little package. All right, so we've got instructions and warranty info in there, which we never use. We've got the cable to charge it in here or if you want to use it wired and it is braided, which is nice, feels good quality. And we've got a micro USB connector on here. And then finally, this looks like some sort of uh, extension kind of thing. What is it? Right, so I just had a look. So it looks like this end goes into the micro USB connector. And then obviously you'll plug that into your PC and it kind of just acts as an extender for the, um, the wireless dongle. So that is the mouse. Now let's unbox the keyboard. So here's the keyboard. In terms of specs, we've got Cherry MX Red switches, which like I said earlier, they are my favorite. And it's also low profile as well, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I always think low profile looks pretty nice. So let's get it open. So again, I'm guessing this just contains the uh, kind of warranty info and instructions, same thing. And then here is the actual keyboard, which I'll take out of this packaging. Okay, wow, this is actually a lot thinner than I was expecting it to be. I get that it has low profile switches, but yeah, it feels super slim. Uh, I've got the Alienware logo over here, which I've always liked the Alienware kind of text. It looks pretty futuristic. We've got the uh, little scroll wheel here, which I'm guessing that will interface with maybe like the software or the volume. We'll have to wait and see. And then we've got this big chunky cable over here. It would have been cool if it was detachable, but never mind. Uh, with a USB pass-through. So yeah, I'll be able to hook this both of these up to the PC, and then we'll be able to yeah plug stuff into here. We should be able to take off one of the keycaps, and you can see here that it is in fact a Cherry MX Red Switch, which are pretty quiet, and that's why I like them. And obviously it does have full RGB as well, all 16.8 million of those colors which are controllable via Alienware software. And we've also got these flip-up feet on the back. Just one thing that might annoy some people a little bit is that it's not completely white. You can see here it's sort of almost like an off-white, which seems to be the case with lots of PC hardware. I don't really know why that is the case. It's sort of almost gray. But I mean, once you've got all your lights on, you can never really tell, so that's fine. So let's go and unbox the last product, which is the headset. So like I said earlier, this is actually Alienware's previous generation headset. And the reason I got it is because it's the only wireless one that they do. It will actually match nicely with my monitor because my monitor is also the previous generation. So it kind of has all these lines going on, which looks really nice. Let's get rid of this tape and uh, take out the headset. I do like the unboxing experience so far as well. We'll check out the headset in just a minute. We'll just take out this little box to see what other accessories we get. Right, so inside the accessory box, we have got the USB adapter, which is what is going to allow us to use it wirelessly. And then under here, we should have some sort of charging cable. So again, kind of very similar to the one that we got with the mouse. It is micro USB and it is braided as well. So it feels good quality. I've got an audio cable over here as well, in case you do want to use it as just like a traditional headset and not like USB. And then finally, we've got the instruction manual and kind of warranty info again. So yeah, we'll put that to one side, check out the headset. All right, here is the headset, guys, and I am loving the aesthetics here. They look so good. We've got these lines going on, which glow, uh, as does the Alienware logo. And I'll have to check this later, but I think that you can actually change both independently. But yeah, I'll double check in the software. Uh, we've got the mic as well, which pulls down, similar to how some of Logitech's headsets do. Uh, whether it will mute it as it goes up, I'm guessing it probably does. But again, we'll check that later. And it feels, guys, it feels really, really premium. This was a very expensive headset when it first came out a couple of years ago. Uh, I think it was over like $200. I paid 100 and something pounds for it, which uh, I got it on sale. So it felt like I got a really good deal. And yeah, quality is great. We've got this nice kind of uh, metal going on here. The headband has got this very squidgy material, as you can see, which feels very squidgy, actually. Rotating ear cups, which are always nice because you can kind of just place it on your desk and it won't move about. And yeah, from what I saw of reviews, people loved the material that they used for the ear cups and they said that they sounded really good. The only complaint was that they were so expensive, but I got a good deal on these. So I think all that's left to do now is to grab all the new stuff and get it put in the new setup. So the time has come to remove the old stuff from the setup. So we're going to be saying goodbye to the good old Logitech G900 mouse. You have served me well. I will still be keeping this stuff, by the way, guys. It will just go probably in a cupboard somewhere until I find a use for it, but goodbye for now. And goodbye to the Drivo Blade Master Pro, which has been a good keyboard. I have enjoyed using it. This is probably a good time just to explain what I've done with cable management. So I've actually cut a hole in the mouse pad 
and then there's also a hole in the desk as well. So all my cables go into there, uh, underneath the desk, around the back, and then to the PC. So looks nice and clean. I've got to kind of mess around with a few of the cables because obviously we're running uh, the new keyboard through here. So I've got to hook that up somehow and I need to remove this cable as well. As regards space, it's probably going to be a little bit tight just because we have the stream deck, we've got a phone charger, and of course my last keyboard, the Drevo keyboard, was a 10 keyless, whereas this new one is full size. So we will be a little bit tight for space, but we'll work it out, we always do. That wasn't too bad actually, we've got everything connected now. I've actually plugged the wireless USB receiver from the mouse uh, into the keyboard because of course it does have a USB pass-through and that's just to make sure that it's nice and close and that it has a good connection. And we've ran the two cables from the keyboard underneath the desk, which I'll show you in a minute, round the back of there to the PC and all connected up and seems to all be working fine. Let's go under the desk. So all the cables run through that hole in the desk and then they go through that trunk in and round to the back of the PC and they all plug in over that. So it looks pretty clean. So the setup is complete. Let me know what you think down below in the comments, guys. Do you think it looks good? I think it looks amazing. Let me show you a little bit closer. So over here, we've got the mouse, which this thing looks great. I mean, I did an Instagram post the other day and tons of you guys liked it and said uh, it looked really cool. Got the alien logo over here and uh, these kind of cool Tron lines as well. Pretty much a lot of the kind of Alienware stuff reminds me of Tron, I don't know why. I think it must just be the lines and kind of like the color scheme. Speaking of which, this blue is actually the default color scheme. I've not changed it in the software. Um, and coincidentally, it matches perfectly with like the back of my desk and with the monitor, which is awesome. I also like the shape of the mouse as well. I tend to hold my mouse in this grip and it kind of just fits my hand perfectly. Uh, moving over to the keyboard, I love this thing. Check out this text. I've always liked the kind of futuristic text. All of it together just looks like it's come straight out of a spaceship. But yeah, we've got the uh, low profile switches on here, or low profile keycaps rather, with the Cherry MX switches. And it's actually very, very nice to type on. Like I said, Cherry MX reds are my favorite switches. And uh, yeah, I like the look of the low profile keycaps as well. I'll be talking more about the kind of usability and features in the full review because I will be doing a full review of each of these products. So make sure you subscribe if you wanna see that. As regards the color, I think we made the right choice on the white because now it kind of stands out and makes it a feature rather than just blending into the black mouse pad. So that was good. And then last but not least, we've got the headset. And guys, this thing feels awesome. Like you have to pick this up in person, I think, to realize how good it feels. Yeah, it feels really sturdy. We've got the uh, nice material on the ear cups, which is actually my favorite because I find like leatherette material just gets too hot. We've got the Alien logo and the lines as well, which I did check and in the software you can control those independently, which is really cool. Obviously we've got the rotating ear cups and extremely comfortable as well. Yeah, again, just the aesthetics guys of all of this stuff. It just looks so good together. So like I said, guys, let me know down below in the comments what you think. I'm really happy with it. It just fits in so well with like the whole room and the look I'm going for. If I show you over to the second setup as well, you can see I'm trying to go for the same theme throughout, which brings me to this. I said in last week's video that I had a bunch of Razer Mercury gear ready to install in this setup. However, after seeing how good this stuff looks in person, I'm actually having second thoughts about whether or not to ditch the Razer stuff and actually just get some more Alienware gear to kind of have one coherent theme throughout. What do you think? Let me know. So as I said, very happy with the new gear. I think it looks awesome and I'm looking forward to using it every day over the next few months so that I can then give you guys a full review and let you know what it's actually like to use every day. If my ultra wide is anything to go by, hopefully they should perform pretty good. If you enjoyed the video today, guys, a like rating would be appreciated. It helps me out. And subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I kind of try and do a balance between this kind of vlog upgrade stuff and reviews as well. So if that interests you, hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. You can catch me over on Instagram or Twitter at Tech Tesseract. That's kind of where I post all the behind the scenes stuff and fill you guys in on what's happening between videos. But yeah, with that being said, hope you guys have an awesome week. I'll catch you all in the next one.